And, uh, and so that was a big deal. And um, so the story of Jesus is this king is like, okay, we're, I'm not making my Roman um, partners happy. They're getting, they're getting itchy. So, and also I'm getting, I'm getting word that, um, you know, I've got, I've got this prediction because I'm a very superstitious guy that there's going to be a kid who's going to grow up and eventually uh, I, I take over my kingdom. And if there's one thing this, this king hates is, um, you know, somebody taking over his kingdom. It's why he, it's why he, he, he um, kind of capitulated to the Romans so he, he could keep his rule. So now he's getting this, this prophecy that this kid's going to come and take his rule. Because he's superstitious. And people at that time, they were very superstitious. This king, who, you know, of his time, was brutal. He sent out these rules that said, okay, um, I've got this prophecy, but I can't, that if, I, if I say this prophecy is worrying me, that's going to sound weird. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say, okay, um, we need to do a head count. We need to take a census. For, um, yeah, that's right, tax purposes. That's what I'm going to do. And in so doing, find out if there's any new babies that match the description of this prophecy that these people told me about. But this is, like, this is on the down low. And so this, uh, this carpenter dude and his girlfriend, they were engaged to be married um, and then he, uh, the carpenter gets this letter that says, Hey, listen, um, we need to do a head count and any count, any children that you have. And it's like, sure. Okay, fine. I got, I, I got to make the trip. I got to make the trip over to where I was born. Cause that's where the, the registration says, okay, I was born here. So I got to go there and I got to fill out another thing that says, okay, it's me. Yeah, it's me. It's the same dude, but I don't live here anymore. I live in another city. Oh, by the way, I'm getting married. Well, before he is ready to go make this trip, because this is not, you can't just like stop, drop what he's doing, take a flight to his town. He's got, he's got to make this journey, right? And uh, turns out his, his, um, his fiance is pregnant. And there's a whole story behind, there's a whole mythology behind it. But suffice to say, this can, this caused a real problem for, for this dude because if the king finds out that there is, you know, a baby, then that baby has to be documented somewhere and somehow. And then the king's going to get info. Oh, there's a, there's a kid. And it, and it ticks off all the boxes in this, in this prophecy. So I'm going to go I'm, and I'm going to kill this kid, which which he had started doing, um, and and as uh, Mary and his fiance uh, and and this carpenter Joseph are making their way uh, over the the weeks and the months to back to his hometown to get settled in, they're getting news that okay, uh, the king's mad, and he is t- taking certain kinds of babies and he's going to do away with them. But, uh, but all, in all of this, um, uh, the, uh, because of this census and all, and a bunch of other things, uh, there's no place to stay when they finally arrive in jo- uh, Joseph's um, birth city, hometown. Like his family's not from there anymore. Uh, and he's lived all his life somewhere else, so he doesn't have any friends to take him in. So they got to go the traditional way. way they got to go to all the, the different hotels and whatnot. And because of the census and a bunch of other things going on, there's there's no room. And also, nobody wants to take in um, some lady who's about to have a kid, who's about to give birth. That's a whole like difficult, messy, loud, noisy thing. That's not good business. And so they were like turning them away until finally they there was like they had to go somewhere and, and get shelter. And so they went into you know a, a barn, basically a, a place you know a stable, uh, and uh, and you know begged the 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 stable dude to, to let them like camp out and like, like someplace clean. And that's when uh, Mary gave birth to Jesus. 
And that is the story of why Jesus was born and why he was born in a particular place. And the whole story of Christmas is this this very convoluted mythology around uh, how and why he was born, where he was born, and why he was important compared to other other babies born at the same time. Yeah. So that's the that is the story of Christmas in a nutshell. But what does that have to do? What does that have to do with the story of the Tao? What, how, what does the Tao have to do with Christmas? Right? What does that have to do with the baby Jesus? What does that have to do with Santa Claus? What does that have to do with gift giving or singing Christmas carols? Well, there's one element in this Christmas story that I think a Taoist could relate to, and that is specifically the child in the stable, the child in the manger, as a as a an illustration. Right, it's Taoism. Taoism views infants as closer to the Tao than adults. See. As we as we grow up, as we go to school, we get on the job training, we get life experience, we fill ourselves with all sorts of learning, human learning, not necessarily a real knowledge, but human knowledge. Um, much of which takes us away from our essential selves, our natural selves. We we get caught up in shallow conventions. The group think, what our boss thinks of us. Oh, I hope I get that promotion. Shallow things. But the mind of an infant, though, is empty. And that's the that's precisely the sort of that's precisely the sort of thing that a Taoist strives for. So, I'm going to read. I'm going to share. Uh, how the Tao relates to Christmas, the story of Christmas. All right, let's get into the original text. I'm going to use the the very flowery version, uh, combined with the uh, the original uh, Chinese uh, characters. This is long, so I'm going to read all the way through at one time, and then I'm going to break it apart piece by piece, and then I'm going to go on with my comparison of, of the Tao with um, Christmas, the story of Christmas. So chapter 55. Those who hold an abundance of virtue are similar to newborn infants. Poisonous insects do not sting them. Wild beasts do not claw them. Birds of prey do not attack them. Their bones are weak. Tendons are soft, but their grasp is firm. They do not know of sexual union, but can manifest arousal due to the optimism of essence. They can cry the whole day and yet not be hoarse. Due to the optimum of harmony, knowing harmony is said to be constancy. Knowing constancy is said to be clarity. Excessive vitality is said to be inauspicious. Mind overusing energy is said to be aggressive. Things become strong and then grow old. This is called contrary to the Tao. That which is contrary to the Tao will soon perish. So let me uh, break this down into different piece, pieces. There's a lot here. Those who hold an abundance of virtue are similar to newborn infants. So again, there's this con contrast, an abundance of things, a virtue, an abundance of all these good things are like babies who have, who have just been born. Poisonous insects do not sting them, wild beasts do not claw them, birds of prey do not attack them. Their bones are weak, tendons are soft, but their grasp is firm. So um, babies don't know, you know, they're being attacked by all these things. Um, so, so the, it is. It is the thing. If if such a thing does that, 
it is not because that they are the the hostile thing. They are they are not making this violence. They are not inviting this violence because they don't know anything. They don't have anything to be violent and and make these these dangerous animals make them feel this fear. And yet if these dangerous animals do do these things, it's not because of a response to the child being aggressive and hostile and violent, attacking them. It's because it's there. They, they don't know better. And neither does a child. So it's not being attacked. It is just being reacted to because it's there. And by and large, newborn babies left out in the, in the elements. You know, they're going to be attacked because it's easy food, not because it's a threat. And also this con contrast. Their bones are weak, tendons are soft, but their grasp is firm. There's this vitality in them. They're not weak themselves. They've got strength in them. Other things are weak. But but a baby has this there there is something in a baby that, that gives it its its strength to grab onto something, even though it is so weak. Structurally, structurally, physically it is weak. They do not know a sexual unit but can manifest arousal due to the optimum of essence. They can cry the whole day and yet not be hoarse due to the optimum of harmony. So they don't know any other way. They just simply are. So, you know, they they don't they don't know they don't know, you know, to to stop crying on command, they just simply cry. And sometimes babies cry. They're excited. They're enthusiastic. Their their bodies do weird things that they have no control over. Their the bodies are just doing it. And th that's just the, the flow of nature. That's just the way it is. There's nothing to read into it. There's not there's no analysis to be had. And half the time, most of the time, even, babies don't know why the thing that is happening that's happening. And sometimes they 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 think it's just funny. That's funny. That's a funny thing. Or they don't even know why they're doing something. But it just perpet perpetuates like like momentum. And if they're just crying, but they've forgotten the reason why they're crying. But they're crying because crying kind of sucks. And so now they're crying because they're crying. And so they just keep going. You know? Knowing harmony is said to be constancy. If you know balance is to know the status quo. Just keep keep things on an even footing. Knowing constancy is to be clarity. If, if things are going as they are, the path of least resistance, then you know where you're, what you're about. You know where you are. You know where you're going. There's no confusion. Think about, let's go back to the baby. You ever see a toddler the moment it sees a cookie, it, it makes a run for it. And if there's stuff in the way, like it kind of scans around and says, oh, what's this thing that's in the way? A dog's in the way. Oh, a parent is in the way. Or oh, a cherry or a toy is in the way. Sometimes they, they, oh, they don't even scan. They're oblivious to everything. And so if there's a toy in the way, they step on the toy, they fall over. And they'll cry. They'll get hurt. But because they've forgotten momentarily, like out of sight, out of mind. But if they they catch a glance at the cookie again, they'll go, they'll forget all that. Oh, okay, hold on, I'm on mission again, and they'll hightail it straight for that cookie, right? They'll hightail it right for the candy. That's all. That's all that they see. That's the path that they're going for. There's no confusion about that. 
excessive vitality is said to be inauspicious. Mind overusing energy is said to be aggressive. So too much vitality, too much energy, using too much, being too forward, too demanding, too much power. There is such a thing. The power of a child is better than the child of a very muscular adult who demands their way. Why? Things become strong, then grow old. This thing is called contrary to the Tao, and that which is contrary to the Tao will perish. So yeah, for a moment, there's more to it. So for a moment, there's power. But eventually, it will go away. Also, people who are in power, sometimes they don't see. They lose focus. They don't have clarity. There isn't harmony. And that eventually that'll die so in this chapter of the Tao Te Ching a child in all his innocence cannot be harmed by human knowledge and practice and the child then is something to celebrate the birth of Jesus as any baby as any child born is a thing to celebrate a birth is something to celebrate and the idea of a poor child, a child of meager means, born in a manger, uh, resonates with the Taoist notion that the low will be high, the dark light, so on and so forth, which is comparable to the, the Christian tenet uh, of the baby Jesus. I mean, okay, so for just a moment here, you know, the whole the whole Taoist um, idea, idea, like where the Taoist uh, rejoice on the promise of the ultimate transcendence of the of the baby Jesus, the Christ child. Well, m maybe, actually, maybe, maybe, but not in the traditional religious sense. I think it would be a Taoist would celebrate the baby Jesus like any child. It's the, the, I the imminence, the potential, the recognition that each thing born holds within itself the fullest expression of its possibility. That, that it's going to, under the right conditions, grow into itself fully, which brings, up, brings us back to that very uh, Emerson idea that we talked about earlier, nature and individualism. Individualism, not to be, not to be confused with, I'm going to strike off and do my own thing, but, but thinking for yourself and expressing yourself and growing as yourself to your full potential. Your individual potential. Um, it's not too far off that the Christian message of equality of all things before God could be Taoist just without the God. Chuang Tzu, who was a Taoist, tells us that the way, that in the way, the Tao, everything moves as one and the same. Each thing has its place in the Tao, its integrity, and the Tao is a perfect summation of all things. Each thing deserves equal respect. Furthermore, we should strictly limit our actions lest they interfere with the integrity of other things. The meaning and significance of each thing comes from within it. We cannot improve upon anything, and we should not do nothing that might dominate or, imp or impose our expectations of it. So it would be in that spirit, a cautious, respectful, inward-looking spirit or mindset that a Taoist would celebrate the integrity and the beauty of the child in the manger. That is the Taoist Christmas. <laughs>